They were once the enfant terrible of the art world, whose work had the power to cause shock and outrage as well as to delight. Now, Jeff Koons and Damien Hirst are giants of modern art. Their work sells for millions. And they've come together at Damien Hirst's new gallery in Newport Street in London's Vauxhall for a free exhibition of Jeff Koons' art. It's the first show of Jeff Koons' work in this country since 2009, and it comes from Damien Hirst's own collection. They curated the exhibition together, but this is the moment when Jeff Koons sees it for the first time. Wow. In the first gallery are some of his early ready-made works, inspired by his hero, Marcel Duchamp. Damien, this looks amazing. It looks really amazing. Wow. Wow, let me give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Hurst has been a huge fan of Kuhn's work since his student days. We had a Hoover like that. I mean, you, when you... We you had a Hoover like that, yeah. And now he's able to buy just about anything he wants. That was the piece I bought from Larry, the first piece, I think. So this is not a Hoover, this is a shampoo. Yeah, it's still a Hoover. Yeah, it's a it's Hoover, made by Hoover. Hoover. Hoover shampoo. Hoover shampoo poly. In 2013, Kuhn's broke the record for the most expensive work by a living artist sold at auction. A sculpture from the same series as this one, the balloon monkey, fetched more than $58 million. It feels like you couldn't really do the show without it. And, 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 and as if you built room. this room for it. The surfaces, uh, it's cast in stainless steel. Yeah, I've got no idea how you achieve that, because yeah. I look at it, it's like if I get people to polish things, there's always a kind of little ripple in the reflection, because the reflection's so pure. One room is not for the faint-hearted. And when did you get these pieces, Damien? About six or seven years ago. While the huge bowl of eggs symbolises creation and birth, the other images are still controversial. They're from a series from the early 90s, Made in Heaven, starring Ilona Staller, better known by her porn star name, Chichilina. Everything's perfect, you know, in the world, and I'm talking about people. And so, uh, you know, I accepted my uh, ex-wife's uh, past. I accepted her background. I fell in love with her uh, for who she was exactly. Uh, the person, but it ended up it did not work out. So it was really about, uh, you know, acceptance. When I first saw it, I was like, he's lost it. I just thought, that's not art. He's completely, completely lost it. And it's like, I didn't like them. I just thought, you would, why would you want to go that far kind of thing? And then afterwards, it was like about a couple of years later, I was like, oh my God, no, I love them. They became, for a while, they were my favorite pieces of Jeff. Damien, what age were you? Can you remember exactly when and where you saw Jeff's work at first? Um, I'd seen it in magazines, I think, to start with, when I was a student, so like 80, late, early 80s, 85. And then when I saw it for real, it was in the Saatchi Gallery, in the New York Art Now show, which was, I think, 86, 87. And then, you know, my tutors didn't like it. And that was why I absolutely loved it. The tutors yeah, didn't like well, it? They, they were sort of behind everything, and then with the New York Art Now show, they just went, that's not art. And I was like, I just loved it even more because it was like, you know, totally punk. It was against what, what my tutors believed and everything. So it was like, and so simple and easy. And here you are. And did you ever think that actually you would end up as being one of Jeff Kuhn's major collectors in the world? Never. I mean, you know, it's like, you, you know, you, I, mean, I remember looking at the works at the time and not, I mean, not, I mean, you just could never possess anything like that. But also to be in a position where you can, you know, I mean, I've got Jeff's work in my house at home and it's like, you know, to think I've got like a piece by the TV so I can watch TV and I often find myself not, not looking at the TV and then looking at the piece. And it kind of does more than the TV most of the time. <laughs> so when were you first aware of Damien's work? We were in an exhibition together in uh, Arlson, Germany. And uh, this would have been around 1991, 92. Yeah, it was very early, wasn't it? When you did the puppy. Yeah, yeah. The giant puppy made out of flowers. So we spent time together. Uh, our families hung out, and uh, so Damien met my father. And I think your mother was there. Yeah, my mom was yeah. there, and I, I know Damien's mother. So it, it was wonderful that we spent time together in this small German uh, uh, little city, and that's where we befriended each other. And when you started collecting 
Jeff's work. It occurs to me that you were developing as an artist, as Jeff was still developing as an artist. Was that one of the reasons that it was someone that you wanted to collect? Um, I just, you know, I've been studying work and I, just, I had quite a lot of money coming in suddenly and it's like, I thought, well, it, it could, I could justify making that kind of money if I was buying these things that I'd always loved. I remember the first piece I bought from Jeff was that single Hoover downstairs and I said to Larry Gagosian, who's got the gallery in New York, how much is that? And he said it's like 60,000 or something. And I, I remember I said to him, I said, will it go up in value? And he went, if you're buying it for that reason, don't buy it. And I was like, wow, what do you mean? So then I did buy it in the end. <laughs> so Damien, tell me, um, you have this space you decided that you would show Jeff's work. So why was it important to put this exhibition together? I always had an idea that I'd like to do a show of Jeff's work. Because I think Jeff, I mean, I do, in my work, I have lots of different things that I do. So that, and Jeff's sort of similar like that. So he's a difficult artist to collect. Because you think you want one of everything and it becomes a, quite a commitment. But I always thought, I'd, you know, I'd love to have enough to do a really great show. And I think I've managed that. There's a few pieces that I haven't got, which is, uh, I never got, I'd, what I always wanted was a kind of one of the wooden pieces and one of the ceramic pieces from the... Uh, the ceramic series. from Banality. Yeah, and I never managed to get one of those, but I don't think it feels like anything's missing. I didn't feel that anything was missing. It feels absolutely complete, uh, from entering with the first inflatable flowers to, you know, ending here with a, an elephant. So you see your life flashing before you. I see a creative life. Uh, and, you know, working with objects, working with a metaphor. And what I really find important in this exhibition is the friendship with Damien. I mean, that's what's really meaningful to me, that Damien would uh, collect my work and just this uh, interaction. That's what I really walk away with. I mean, I think there's a, with Jeff's work, there's, I mean, he chose that great title for his series of works, Celebration, which is a great title. I was really jealous when you called that, when you got that title, because it's like, <laughs> plus I, I'm a bit more prone to darkness here and there. But I think, it, I think art in itself is, even if you're making something negative, it's a positive force. I mean, it's, I mean, it's very difficult for anyone to come in here and not absolutely love it. You know, it's like, I mean, you think, I mean if, whenever you see kids in a Coons exhibition, they're just like, wow, and then, you know, running around loving it. Right now that we're sitting in front of Play-Doh, one of your biggest and indeed heaviest works that Damien has, I, I want to spend a little time talking about that. Why did you buy this piece of work? When I saw it, it's like, it just seems to be the basis of all art. It's like, I mean, I've got kids myself and you played with Play-Doh and it just sort of seemed to say everything. You know, I have a young son and he made a, a mound of Play-Doh. And I was looking in a different direction and he said, Dad, and I turned and I uh, looked at him and he had the mound right here. He <laughs> went, voila. <laughs> that was the beginning of it, that voila. You spoke earlier though about um, the fact that your work perhaps seems more optimistic than Damien. You said your work seems darker. And I wonder, the diamond skull to me seems the ultimate dark object. I don't know, I mean, it's semantics, isn't it? But you know, art is always optimistic, even if it's art about death or life. I mean, I had elephant on my desk and when it arrived, I remember looking at it and I remember thinking, oh my God. I just thought it's got that same quality that the diamond skull has and it looks totally hopeful and optimistic and shiny and bright, yet it also looks like you could pop it with a pin. And I remember being thinking, my God, I wish I could make a diamond skull that you could pop with a pin. But it's like that, that, that's, its, that's it, you know, and also it's made of a material that, you know, is lasting, you know, 6,000 years and counting. You know, the casting is like a 6,000 year old process. So it's, it covers everything. But what do you see in each other? I mean, I suppose all the artists that I love have something that I don't. I mean, what I love about your work, or, you, or Jeff, is as well, is that, is that he's like a contemporary, he's alive today, and it's like, you know, you kind of can admire people from afar, but it's like, it's, it's totally inspirational to see that somebody living today can make art that's like on a par with all of those dead guys, who when you, when you were young, you look at and you think, <laughs> I mean, I, I always, whenever I think about my work as well, I think about my, my own work, I'm fo I know all my own problems and weaknesses and doubts, and you know, you go through them all to end up with good work. Whereas when I look at your work, I can't see any of it. And I just think, and I have to remind myself, you know, that you're not, that you're getting this kind of finished, this, these beautiful finished projects. Tell them that you're doubtful sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, with Damien's work, what I always enjoy about Damien's work is its power. I mean, it's really visually, uh, there's a strength there. It's always uh, very uh, confrontational in, in its power. Uh, type of images, uh, objects, uh, things that are brought together are uh, extremely well thought out, constructed. There's a natural 
quality about it that even though they're kind of desperate, uh, uh, different things, they really unify themselves so well. It's just an amazing uh, uh, intellect and thought. I mean, this idea of a discussion about power and, and control and giving up control, I mean, I think that it's extremely strong in Damien's work. I mean, look at the butterflies that are painted into uh, the surface. I mean, it's a profound discourse. You. Um both have attracted a lot of attention because of the vast amount of money that your art achieves. Do you think in a way that sometimes obscures your art? I mean, I, th I kind of think that money is, it can obscure things, especially in England, I think, because a lot of people think that artists need to be poor or that you can't have a focus of money. I mean, when I did my auction, when I made all that money, it changed everything for me. It was, and it was made in such a short period of time. But then I suddenly noticed that there were like businessmen started taking me seriously. Mm -hmm. And there's just audiences everywhere and the audiences change. And I think, you know, money is a huge part of our life. And I, I've always thought it's as important as love or as death or, a, you know, something to come to terms with, something to understand. And it's a key and it's something you need to respect. But I definitely don't think it should be considered a, a dirty word. And once you've made the art and someone has bought it, does it matter to you that people might buy your art as a commodity rather than something they love? I was always brought up to be self-reliant. And uh, so I, you know, I would sell drinks on golf courses at maybe the ninth hole as a way to make money. Or <laughs> I went door to door selling gift wrapping uh, paper and chocolates. And uh, so and I enjoyed the interaction with people. To be part of a dialogue with people like Warhol and Dali, Picabia, Picasso, you know, Manet, Leonardo, just to be in a dialogue, to be a group. I mean, here to be a group with Damien, we're involved in a dialogue. It's an international discourse, and there are hundreds of thousands of other people that we're connected to, and we're having a dialogue about life and talking about art and how it's changed. It's changed my life. It's made my life vaster than it ever would have been if I didn't get involved in this dialogue and that people are supportive to that ongoing dialogue, hopefully is just a symbol that contributing in some manner. Thank you both very much indeed for this interview. Thank you.